This meeting is being live streamed on the Southwark Council web YouTube channel and uh, a recording of it will be available after the meeting. Please note all guests will have their mute microphones muted when they join the meeting. You will be asked to remain on mute until unless I ask you to speak. For example, in the three minute time slots reserved for objectors, the applicant, supporters and ward councillors. Please do not switch on your microphone until I have given you permission to speak. Attendees who are using the telephone dial-in function on a smartphone are also muted. If I ask you to speak, please dial star six to unmute yourself. To ensure that this virtual meeting runs smoothly, only one individual will be allowed to speak at any time. Any person speaking must be permitted to finish what they're saying without interruption. If I request that an individual stop speaking, they should do so immediately. Interruptions may result in you being disconnected from this meeting. If a member of the subcommittee wishes to speak, could I ask them to indicate this via the raise hand symbol on the message board? Members of the public are reminded that the message board is not for public use. Any messages left on the message board by members of the public will be disregarded by subcommittee members. Bearing in mind that this meeting is live streamed and that a recording will be available on the Council's YouTube channel, if you are planning to speak, you may choose to switch off your camera so that only your voice will be heard. Members of the public who are disconnected from the meeting due to technical difficulties should use the link or dial-in instructions they were sent initially to return to the meeting. Members of the public are welcome to record, screenshot or tweet the public proceedings of this meeting. A copy of the Council's protocol for reporting and filming is available on the Civic website. During the meeting, members of this subcommittee will not access the internet, except as it relates to official business of the meeting. Send or receive emails, text messages or tweets concerning the business of the subcommittee to anyone outside the meeting. Please note that the members will be accessing the agenda papers via the internet. We will be taking five minute screen breaks every hour and reconvene afterwards. I would now like the officers to introduce themselves and explain their roles at this meeting, starting with the planning officers. Thank you, Chair. My name is Dibesh Patel. I'm here to represent the Director of Planning and to advise members of the subcommittee on planning and general issues related to the applications considered today. Um, my name is Vandela Gamble. I'm the planning officer presenting and advising members of the subcommittee on item 7.1. My name is Liam Bullen and I'm here to advise upon the TPA reports, items 8 and 9. Uh, now the legal officer. Good evening, Chair. My name is Margaret Foley. I'm the legal officer for this meeting and my role is to advise members of the subcommittee on planning legislation and legal matters related to planning. Thank you. And the clerk. Good evening. My name is Gerald Gola. I'm the constitutional officer and clerk for the subcommittee. I'm here to minute the meeting and to advise on the procedure for hearing the items and decision making. Thank you very much. Now we move on to item two, apologies. Have we received any apologies for the meeting? No, Chair, all members are here. Thank you. Now we're going to confirm voting members. I will ask the members of the subcommittee to confirm they are voting member of this subcommittee. Councillor Adele Morris. Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. Councillor Maggie Browning. Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. Councillor Sunil Chopra. Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member, thank you. Councillor Martin Seaton. Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. Councillor Richard Leeming. Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. Councillor Jane Salmon. Yes, Chair, I'm a, a voting member. And I can confirm that I too am a voting member of this subcommittee. 
So we move to, to item four, notification of any items of urgent business, which I deem as urgent. Um, item 7.2, 62 to 64 Western Street, London SE 13 QJ has been withdrawn at the request of the applicant and will be brought back to a future subcommittee meeting. The following additional documents have been circulated before the meeting. Supplementary agenda number one containing the provisional TPO for items eight and nine. Supplementary agenda number two containing the addendum report relating to item 7.1 and the members pack. Supplemental agenda number two is only sent as a soft copy this afternoon. Disclosures, uh, item five, disclosures of interest and dis dispensation. Does any member wish to declare any interest or disp dispensation in respect of any item or issue to be considered at this meeting? No, Chair. Thank you. Item number six, minutes, pages one to three of the agenda pack. Can we approve these minutes as a correct record of the meetings held on 8th of July 2020? Are these minutes agreed? Agreed. Thank you, Joe. Okay, item seven, development management. The next item of business concerns the determination of planning applications. I would like to remind everyone of the subcommittee guidance on the conduct of business. Officers will present the report, outline their recommendations and answer questions raised by the subcommittee. If present and wishing to speak, the following may then address the subcommittee for no more than three minutes each. Firstly, one spokesperson representing any objectors to the application. I believe there is only one uh, objector in the room, so we don't need to discuss uh, dividing the time, followed by the applicant or their agent, followed by any spokesperson present uh, representing any supporters of the application who live within 100 metres of the development site, and lastly, a ward councillor representing the area affected by the proposal. Each speaker should restrict their comments to the planning applicant aspects of the proposal and should avoid repeating information which is already in the report. The meeting is not a hearing where all participants present evidence to be examined by other participants. At the end of each representation, the subcommittee may ask questions of the presenter. Speakers should lead the subcommittee to subjects on which they would welcome further questioning. Ward members in attendance and those nominated to speak on behalf of objectors, supporters and applicants may be asked to make further brief contributions in case any issues need to be clarified after they have addressed the meeting. This is not an opportunity to take part in the debate of the subcommittee. After receiving all submissions, the subcommittee will debate the application and consider the recommendation. This is a council subcommittee meeting, which is open to the public and there should be no interruptions from the members of the public. Finally, I would like to everyone present to know that although the planning subcommittee comprises members from different political parties, we are not politically whipped. Our decisions are made in accordance with the council's planning policy and based on information contained within the relevant reports, together with consultation responses and any verbal submissions made today. How we approach these applications is set out in the development management report at item seven. And if members are happy to note that report, we will move on to considering the planning applications. Are you so happy? Content, Chair. Thank you very much. So we move on swiftly to 7.1, 14 to 18 Inverton Road, London SC 15 3DD, pages eight to 43 of the main agenda pack and the relevant pages of the addendum report. 
first of all, we will consider the officer's report. So, Vendela, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just going to try to broadcast my screen. Um, I think I might need permission to share my screen. One second, um, I'll make you a co-host. Thank you. Okay. So hopefully you're able to view my screen at this stage. Um, would you just be able to confirm that everything's all right? Yes, I can see yes. Great, thank you very much. Okay, so um, thank you, Chair. Uh, before I begin my presentation, I would like to draw members' attention to uh, the addendum submitted today. Firstly, I would like uh, to, to draw attention to a missing word in paragraph 12, um, which changes the meaning of an additional condition, uh, where then should be inserted in between um, the words otherwise and in accordance with any such approval given, um, which this will be in place in the final recommendation. Um, so points of clarification raised in the addendum includes the setting of the grade two listed Ivydale Primary School, which is located roughly 200 meters from the application site where the development site is not uh, considered to be in, in the surroundings of which this heritage asset is experienced. So development at this site would not affect the significance of this asset. Secondly, a clarification um, made in the addendum is in regards to density, as the overall density of the site exceeds the target level for a suburban zone. Officers believe the proposed scheme meets several criteria for exemplary standards of design given the site constraints. Um, this will be gone through in a further detail in my presentation. Um, thirdly, an observation made regarding the school streets project that has been provided, um, whereas of last Friday, a decision was made for an experimental traffic order to be implemented within the next month on Inverton Road and Lanbury Road. Um, whilst the site falls outside of this closure zone, an additional condition has been added into the addendum, which requires a service management plan to be submitted and approved by the council prior to occupation. This will take into consideration any delivery options and servicing options um, as a result of these uh, school street closures. Um, and these will all be addressed in further detail in my presentation. Thank you, so I'll, I'll begin now. Um, so the application is for the demolition of existing buildings at 14 to 18 Inverton Road and the construction of a mixed use building which comprises of five four bedroom terrace residential houses facing onto Surrey Road. 40 square meters of A1 retail facing Inverton Road and a two bedroom flat above with associated cycle and refuse storage. So here is um, the red line boundary, which so shows where the site is located, um, which borders Inverton Road, Surrey Road and Joseph Mews. Um, to note, the site closure um, is on towards past, past the site um, in between um, on Inverton Road. Um, I, hopefully I'll be able to show you a better graph later in my presentation. So the site itself is located in a suburban density zone, air quality management area, and fa falls within the Peckham and Nunhead action area. It's not within a conservation area or near a heritage asset. Um, as mentioned earlier, however, the late Victorian London Board School is located on the near, nearby Bellwood Road, um, which, which is also known as Ivydale Primary School. And this is grade two listed. Um, however, is not considered in the surroundings of which uh, the heritage asset is experienced. So uh, here you can see a picture of the existing site, um, which comprises of three two-story residential properties at the end of the short terrace on Inverton Road at its junction with Surrey Road, and a single-story property that has been built within the rear garden of the corner building, uh, 1B Surrey Road, which is located here. So the terrace is currently facing Inverton Road and is part of a long narrow street block within a residential area with the majority of properties surviving from the late Victorian period. So I'll just show you some views down Inverton Road. And this is a view of the site from Surrey Road. And this is the view um, down Joseph Mews from Surrey Road, which comprises one edge of the site boundary. So 
the existing buildings comprise of five residential units. Um, that's one three bedroom flat, one two bed flat, and three one bedroom flats, and an A1 retail unit of 66 square meters of A1 use class, uh, where 45 square meters is used as shop floor space and 21 square meters is used as ancillary or storage space. The proposal comprises of an uplift of residential units to six, which include five four bedroom houses, one two bedroom flat above the retail unit and an A1 retail unit of 40 square meters, which is notably smaller size than existing. So as you can see in this image, the main terrace of the new houses are facing onto Surrey Road with separate entrances, um, as well as refuse and cycle storage to the front. So this is a view of the proposed scheme at the corner view. Um, and I'll firstly take you through the most contentious element of the proposal, which is the loss of the A1 floor space before moving on to other objections received and addressed in the report. So during the course of this application, we received 134 responses from members of the public comprising of two letters of support and 131 objections. A major concern for local residents was the abolishment of A1 retail, which was entirely removed during the initial submission. Amendments in response to these objections led to amendments and a reconsultation where the scheme now provides 40 square meters of A1 use class. Um, I will show you a comparison drawing of um, the existing and proposed shop in comparison. Um, the proposed shop is at the bottom and the, to the top shows the existing shop um, floor area. So as you can see on this slide, the coloring marks an indicative schedule of goods provided and located within the space. When consulting this reduced size of the A1 retail unit, objections raised concern regarding the reduction of A1 use class from the existing condition. The total reduction in floor space is 66 square meters at existing and to 40 square meters at proposed, which is a loss of 26 square meters in total. So there are two policies in the emerging new civic plan which need to be considered in order to establish the principle of land use. The first is P31 small shops and the second is P37 development outside of protected shopping frontages, town and local centers. So P31 suggests that development must retain small shops where existing small shops are at risk of displacement from development. There should be a full consideration of the feasibility of providing affordable and suitable space for existing occupiers in the completed development. Replacement shops should be like for like in terms of floor space or bespoke to suit the requirements of the business, including provision of storage and servicing space. So in this report, um, it's been assessed whether the reduced size of the proposed shop is capable of offering the same goods and services as the current shop. This includes, but is not limited to, a pay zone for top-ups for gas and electricity, oyster card services, a cash machine, and fresh groceries, including stamps and an off-license. The applicant has suggested that the reduction in floor space of the proposed shop would not lead to a discernible reduction in the offer of goods provided, as represented in the indicative image on the screen. The council's local economy team and planning policy were consulted during this process who suggested that there is no evidence to suggest that the reduction in the size of the floor space uh, would lead to a non-viable A1 unit. In terms of reproviding the same essential goods and services, however, the council has secured that a condition has been added to the draft decision notice, which removes the right to change the potential use class of the A1 retail unit in the future. This covers any legislative changes following the newly instated change to use class order, which applies to applications received after the 1st of September, 2020. Secondly, the applicant has supported provision of a cash point on site to be secured within the section 106 agreement. This would then be required as part of any future lease for the unit. Taking this into consideration, the council is satisfied that the proposed shop meets the conditions of P31 and the replacement shop suits the requirements of the business, including provision of storage and servicing space. The second policy to be considered is P37 within the emerging new civic plan, which requires a walking distance of 400 meters to alternative A1 use classes, whereas adopted policy 1.10 of the saved civic plan requires walking distance of 600 meters to an alternative A1 use class. 
So an assessment of the area has shown that two shops with a similar selection of goods and services are located roughly 300 meters from the site. This is notably K&M Supermarket at 116 Cheltenham Road and Ivydale Mini Market at 382 Ivydale Road. And two shops are further located 500 meters from the site, um, which includes Harding's at 2 Cheltenham Road and Co-op Food at the Hilton House. So in summary, it is felt that the mitigations undertaken suggest that the slight reduction in floor space of the proposed shop would not lead to a discernible reduction in the offer of goods and services provided. Secondly, where four other shops are confirmed to be in the near vicinity, which sell a similar selection of goods, would mean the proposal is compliant with planning policy in principle of land use. So I will now go back um, to the renders to have a view of the design quality and the site layout. Um, assessment. So in terms of design quality, concerns raised by objectors included the development being too high, too close to adjoining properties, and out of keeping with the character of the area. However, in terms of design, officers believe the scheme is of high quality, creating a coherent, attractive streetscape with provision of small front gardens onto Surrey Road, which is characteristic of the street and providing good residential amenity. It is felt that the massing is well expressed, bringing, bringing visual coherency and should sit comfortably within its context. And I will show you a few more images um, from different perspectives of how the building would sit in relation to this neighboring building, buildings. And so this is the frontage along Surrey Road. Um, as you can see, there's some relationship with the existing terraces. And this is a view from the rear, so a view from Joseph Mews. Um, and those are the main renders. So a full daylight and sunlight assessment was also submitted following concerns raised by objectors and the scheme was fully compliant with BRE guidelines in terms of ADF, NSL and VSC. The report also sets out that there is negligible risk of overlooking or sense of enclosure for neighboring properties, in particular 20 in Ritten Road, um, where there are no windows directly overlooking and the length of the garden creates sufficient degree of separation. The London plan provides a density guideline of 200 to 350 habitable rooms per hectare for a suburban zone, which is this, uh, considered the site. The development provides a density of roughly 719 habitable rooms per hectare, which exceeds, exceeds adopted policy. It is set out in policy that maximum densities may be exceeded if a scheme provides exemplary design, which include negligible impacts on daylight, sunlight, outlook and privacy. So in this assessment, um, it's been considered that the proposed scheme meets several criteria for exemplary standards of design, given the constraints on the site, and that the benefits of the scheme outweigh any of the disbenefits. Therefore, officers believe that the transgression and density levels should be acceptable. Furthermore, transport concerns were raised by objectors for the impact of the scheme on local parking provision, traffic, and pollution. A transport assessment and parking stress survey was submitted as part of the application, which was deemed acceptable by the council's transport team. In particular, the results of the parking stress survey demonstrated there is enough space to cater for the parking demand expected from the development, as an average of 75.5% occupancy has been recorded and the current site could already occupy part of the demand. Construction impacts and the impacts of frequency of deliveries to the site was raised as a concern by objectors. A condition requiring a construction environmental management plan and a servicing management plan will be required to be submitted and approved to the LPA in order to mitigate any harmful impacts. Um, I would now like to show um, an image of that I've just received earlier today of um, the proposed school streets closure so we can have an idea of the relationship of the site with um, where the, the street, um, school street closures will take place. And this hasn't been included in the members pack as it was just received earlier today um, from highways officers. Um, I would like to point out, this is the um, site on the corner where you see that number 14 um, past the intersection between Inverton Road and Surrey Road. And um, where those blue markings and purple markings show, um, that is the start of the school, the temporary school street closure, um, which ends um, further along Inverton Road. Um, and this proposal sets out 
uh, closures to part of Inverton Road to uh, pedestrian and cycle zone um, only on Mondays to Fridays between 8 a.m. and 9.15 a.m. and 3 and 4 p.m. Um, as a result of this, um, a service management plan has been requested by condition um, to, be, to acknowledge the impact that this could have on deliveries to the site. So I will just put us back to the members pack. Um, in conclusion, the planning department is satisfied that the applicant has put forward a positive scheme that will contribute to the local community. Recommend and recommend permission to be granted subject to a section 106 agreement. Um, so I'm happy to answer any additional questions at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Vendela. Um, I'm just wondering whether it's best to keep this shared screen up. Um, yeah, I could close it and we can come back into it if okay. that's better. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I'll kick off with a question, actually, uh, while the, yeah. the members are thinking. Um, the amenity space is not um, up to the required amount. Could you just clarify the table on the page 19 of the, mem of the uh, report with the uh, amenity space as the last okay. column? Let's see. It, does that amenity calculation include the bit with the with the bin store and cycle storage, or is it just the garden at the back? No, so um, amenity does not include any um, space that is fronting onto a public highway because it's not felt that that's private and wouldn't count towards that space. So the only thing that has been considered are the rear gardens in this okay. case um, and the balconies. Um, for the and they should really have 50 flat. square meters each, is that right? That's correct, yes. Including the two bedroom flat? Um, so there is, for a, a flat, it is required that um, 50 square meters of communal amenity space be available, um, which has not been provided, no. All right. So, Chair, may, may I just come in on that just to clarify? So um, 50 square meters is for a flatted development um, block of flats, for example, that, that's the requirement. Um, the requirements for a two bedroom flat would be about 10 square meters. Right, okay. And that's got 13. Yeah. But is um, the payment in lieu calculated with the 50 square meters for the, for the flat? I believe it has been, yes. Yeah, so that's a bit of an overpayment. Okay, any other questions from other members? Uh, Sunil, Councillor Chopra. Uh, thanks, Chair. Just for clarification about the same issue about the bins and the cycle storage, is that matter has been really sorted out or is still under discussion that um, because there's this lot of storage space and the cycle bins, it's very difficult to maneuver the place because it's too small area. So is that yeah. been agreed or something been sorted out? Thank you. So um, it has been recognized by our transport team um, and we have a condition uh, requesting further details of cycle storage so that we're able to confirm that there's sufficient distance to maneuver a bike in between um, the refuse bin and um, put it into the cycle parking space. So who, who's, um, who's going to clarify that? Um, so that's a condition that's been requested from the applicant um, to, to be clarified post-decision. Okay. Councillor Leeming. Uh, yes, further on the uh, cycle storage, um, I note that these are four bedroom houses, yet there are only two uh, cycle storage spaces in each house. Now, it is possible uh, that if there's a four bedroom house, there might be up to four cycles uh, in each house. So it seems to me that potentially there isn't enough cycle storage on this. And I wonder what the transport team have done about that, given the problem, you know, the Southwark Council's policy to try and encourage active travel across the borough and the, um, uh, the very real fear of a cycle theft. So um, what would the transport team say about that? 
Um, so my understanding from the comments I received from the transport team is that there w is sufficient cycle storage that has been provided given um, the table that is in the policy. Um, so the, the, the quantity of cycle storage is sufficient. Um, the type of cycle storage is sufficient. Something that will be considered when we review the details provided um, in discharging the condition I just mentioned is the security of that space. So making sure that that cycle storage is sufficiently secure and hopefully that will mitigate any risk of theft as you mentioned. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Any other questions? Um, nobody's got that blue hand up. Oh, Adele, Councillor Morris. Thank you, I did have my blue hand up. Um, yeah, well, well anyway, um, I just wanted to ask about the um, SIL, and sorry I tried to ask this question earlier and lost all my internet connection, because uh, is, is it the usual procedure to um, for the SIL to be a sort of uh, afterthought, as it were, um, pending uh, you know, post-application and pending the, the floor layouts? Could you just clarify, is, is that how we normally do it? I'll, I'll um, answer that, Councillor Morris. Um, yes, it is. So, so the regulations require the seal to be um, calculated um, once the um, we, we provide a um, notice to the um, developer, and that's after the conditions have have been discharged, and that's where the final detailed calculations for the seal contributions are made. Um, what we tend to do in reports is provide an estimate based on the plans that we have. Okay, thank you. Councillor Seaton. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a quick question on paragraph 28 and 29. And this is to do, of course, with the size of the unit and its reduction. Uh, and quite specifically, uh, paragraph 29, the reduction in the size of shops in the proposed development has been deemed as capable of offering the same goods and services provided in the current shop. Can you just explain how you've arrived at that uh, opinion? Can you explain how that opinion has been formed? So um, one of the slides I think I showed you um, was that comparison drawing between the existing shop and the proposed shop where um, the applicant has laid out the schedule of goods and services in different colors. Um, and that is meant to indicate um, the type of groceries that is being provided in that space currently versus um, what is being proposed. So that gives an indication of how much of the um, existing goods are able to fit into the proposed floor space. And um, considering the pr proposed floor space is 40 square meters of the shop and the existing is 45 square meters, it is quite a slight reduction. So it's very difficult um, for us to say that, um, that any of that won't be able to be uh, sold in that space. Um, the other points in terms of the uh, cash machine is something that we've had to request through the Section 106 agreement to have that um, requested as uh, something that is provided in the shop space. Um, but finer details of where things will be laid out um, isn't something we're able to assess in, in planning terms at this stage. So it is a broad brush um, assessment. If I may, Chair, just to follow up, um, if I may then, if I may just question you on the paragraph 28 and the loss of storage space, there's a reduction of 66%, which appears on, on the face of it to be a considerable reduction, therefore storage space has been reduced effectively to, what, a third, uh, mm. and we have a, a quarter, a 26% a reduction in the floor, uh, shop floor space. These are significant reductions, uh, but if you're saying that you, you're you not really able to make a determination as to the economic viability of that space, bearing in mind what's there before, mm. uh, you can't really therefore make the assertion in paragraph 29 uh, that it's capable of offering the same goods and services provided in the current shop because you've lost two thirds of the storage space and a, and a quarter of the shop front space. Mm. So um, one of the things I guess that isn't really set out in that paragraph clearly perhaps is that um, when we are measuring 
ancillary storage. Um, so the 21 square meters in the existing space, for instance, that doesn't necessarily have to be entirely devoted to storing goods and services, uh, goods to service the, the, the retail unit. It could in fact be circulation space. It could be any ancillary uh, space <laughs> used to support the, the main A1 floor space. So um, the comparison between the seven square meters um, in, in the proposed and the 21 square meters of the existing is also relatively broad brushed um, because we, we just aren't certain about how much of that is necessarily storage space um, versus just other ancillary space. So hopefully that answers your question. So I'll unlock the applicant chair. Thank you very much indeed for that a few response. I don't think we can hear you, You're chair. Mute. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Councillor Morris, you still got your blue hand up. Is Apologies, I'll, I'll take it down now. Okay, and Councillor Leeming, same. Did you have another question? No, okay. Um, right, so we will move on to the objector. So I believe we have uh, Pamela Fennell. So just a note for you, Ms. Fennell, uh, is that the meeting is being live streamed and recorded and available on the YouTube channel. You may wish not to show uh, your camera or turn your camera on. You may wish to address the meeting with audio only. When you introduce yourself, please give your first name and the block or street you live in, not the exact address. So, Pamela. Hello, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm Pamela and I live opposite um, the site in question. Um, okay, I will. St uh, you have three minutes to speak um, and I will start my clock when I'm nearly ready. And I'll give you a 30 second warning at the end. So whenever you're ready, I'm thank ready. You. Um, I think the principal objection here, as has been stated already, is about the loss of retail space. The original application was characterised by a complete lack of consultation of any description or any understanding from the developer um, with the community. The um, revised application with plans which were produced virtually overnight does have some mitigating factors in that the shop is retained. But what we are being faced with here is a very significant, not a slight reduction in community amenity. We are facing a 26 square meter reduction. That's a 40% reduction like for like. The existing shop was expanded only a few years ago um, to meet the needs um, to reach that size. It is a resource which is incredibly important to the community. Um, 131 letters of, of objection were submitted. Um, there are many, many people who rely on it um, for all sorts of reasons. When there was a robbery, um, the community rallied round. We had community members who were providing a security service, you know, there every night when the shop was locking up. Um, we had a whip round to support them. It, it really is a vital resource. The, the fundamental thing here is that we're being told that this is an exemplary development, and yet the, the hard facts of it are the numbers which show a density on this site which far exceeds what it should be, um, but which is apparently acceptable because of the exemplary nature of the design. We have um, a loss in amenity of 40%, which is being described as slight. We have some very misleading designs. So I would note that the information that it is a 40% reduction in space isn't 
included in this documentation. Instead, we have existing plans with dimensions and people proposed next to plans for the new development, which have neither dimensions nor people. We don't get areas, floor areas on those plans either. And we have a layout that was proposed overnight. That storage space, inadequate as it is in pure square meterage, is even worse because it's semicircular. Um, exactly how um, proper provision is being made there is very difficult to see. Um, it's a design that just hasn't been thought through, that doesn't allow for proper security. There's no surveillance of that entrance. The, um, the floor space has never been consulted on with the shopkeepers who've not had any involvement in any of this. It is possible that there is a scheme here that could work and that could benefit the community, but it definitely isn't this one. Thank you. Thank you. Has anybody got any questions for the objector? Can't see anybody. Uh, Councillor Leeming. Um, hi, yes, thank you for that. Um, you say that there is a scheme there that might benefit the community. I wonder if you could possibly outline what that sort of scheme might look like. It's a scheme which preserve, which has provision for the shop during the construction period and considers the potential of an 18 month to two year construction period um, and the need for that resource during it. Um, and a design that includes an adequate floor area that has been properly worked through and consulted on with people who actually have to operate this and who understand about the realities of running a small shop with a very small staffing where people, you know, they don't have a security guard on the door like even the Tesco Metro will do. Instead, they have the till right next to the door. In the current plans, most of the, well, at least half of the um, shelving is away from the till and between the door and the till is only half the space so that the passive supervision opportunities are drastically reduced. The storage requirements are much greater in a shop like this because they simply um, don't have the resources to be having daily deliveries of everything. So often things need to be stored for longer. It needs, a, it needs more space and it needs much better thought out space and it needs a plan for what happens during the construction period. Um, and I have concerns about the overall density of the residential as well. Councillor Seaton. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, can I just check? Um, I note here in the report, I'm not sure if you've seen the report, um, paragraph 33, uh, the uh, report says that there are um, two um, uh, uh, mini markets or supermarkets within 300 meters of this location, 116 Cheltenham Road and 382 Ivydale Road. Uh, so it does appear that the, in terms of our policies, it, it, the, the, um, this provision and the immediate provisions in those two locations and, and others slightly further afield would in fact ensure that you have access to um, local corner shops as it were um, settings. Are, are these, are these from distances locations correct in your view? Um, I believe they're correct, but what they fail to take into account is that they don't all provide the same services. So the lack of the cash point um, and the pay point are quite significant. But also they don't take into account the, um, the natural geography of the area and in particular things like the bounding railway lines. So all of those are located um, in one quadrant. So there is a very significant section of the community around the Ivydale Road area for whom this is the closest shop and all of those shops are another 300 metres away. So if you look at, um, at much of Ivydale Road until you get very close um, to the station, you will find that this is 
the local shop and also for all the um, um, the roads around near the cemetery as well. So while there are there are places where they are equidistant between this shop and other shops, that's very much not the case for, for quite a big population. Um, forgive me, Chair, but just, just to clarify, yeah. are, are you saying that they're in, uh, in, uh, in this, uh, these two locations are in the same direction and therefore in other words, they're all north, as it were. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the geography of the area. I should have looked so the, the other locations that have been mentioned um, yeah. are largely um, on Cheltenham Road. Mm -hmm. um, and one is on the corner of, effectively, of Cheltenham Road and Ivydale Road. Um, I'm not sure exactly. That's kind of west-ish okay. of the location but those three locations are actually very close together um, and are some distance from this location in Inverton Road. And then there is a big patch with nothing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members have questions? Uh, haven't got any more blue hands. Okay, thank you very much, Pamela, for coming. Uh, do, do stay in case we have some extra questions for you later. Uh, I'll now move on to the applicant, Mr. Bass Manga. So, get my timer. Um, okay, Mr. Manga, could you introduce yourself and uh, tell us who you, who you are? what capacity you are in today. Certainly. Thank you very much for the opportunity here. I'm, my name is Vas Manga. I'm the architect of the, in the development. Um, I'm not the applicant. The applicant is Kishan Patel. Okay. So you will have uh, three minutes and I'll give you a 30 second warning. Thank you. Let's start whenever you're ready. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present um, a, a response to some of the questions that have been raised. So, um, Initially, we had a discussion about <clears throat> um, the cycle storage. Well, the, the units do have gardens, so if needs be, additional additional bicycles could be taken through the houses to into the back gardens. Um, also, one of the properties has, has an access to down uh, Joseph Mews and um, will have access to the rear garden from Joseph Mews. Um, we've got the, the large... The large discussion we've talked about is the loss of floor, uh, storage, a loss of um, retail space. Um, correctly, we we um, submitted a pre-application, and in that pre-application, we did have a submit a scheme with without any um, without any A three A three units there. the The pre-app report did again correctly come back and say everything's acceptable but it will be dependent on uh, local comments and then as soon as we submitted we found out that the local comments the, the huge number of local comments are coming in about the loss of a3 uh, warranted us to change our, our views so at that point we resubmitted a scheme uh, which included the a3 um, on the ground floor now the, with regards to the size of the a3 um, Currently, the, uh, the, the applicant, Kishan Patel, he has been running shops all his life. He is a shop owner. He, um, and I believe he actually ran this shop for a, this shop unit for a while. So he understands how shops run and he understands the, what people use uh, local shops like this for as well. Um, there was a question, the storage seems to have been come up a number of times. Um, Kishan will tell you, and many shop owners will tell you, that they no longer need a storage area. They effectively come in and uh, do daily deliveries. They visit the um, cash and carry on a daily basis and they stock into the shelves. Hence, they, they don't need any um, storage space or not a very large storage space. And to corroborate that information, I went online and did a, did a search of uh, a number of um, 
commercial spaces that were for rent. And I, uh, and I could actually confirm that. And I did that, send that information to the planning officer showing a number of uh, development uh, retail units that only had a very small uh, shop area. It's a very small storage. 30 seconds. Um, so the, um, just bear with me. And so uh, with regards to the lack of shop for 18 months, we're hoping to actually get the shop back and running in about um, nine months, after which a fit out period uh, will, uh, will ensue. We've got a section 106 agreement, which retains the shop in perpetuity, despite the shop. Oh, time. Oh. Thank you very much. Okay. Questions to the applicant or the applicant's architect, Councillor Browning. Uh, can you just finish your comment that you were just starting there about the section 106 um, and the shop, just so we're all clear about um, that comment, please. Thank you very much. So we've included a, um, or the section 106 includes a requirement to retain shop usage on that site in perpetuity. Uh, despite the site um, since September having part uh, um, been falling under class E, which means that it can be converted into an office without anyone's input now. So that shop at, at this point in time could be converted into an office unit without requesting some, uh, without anyone else's input. Uh, so the community could very well lose that shop uh, tomorrow but that's not what the applicant is, is wanting. So the applicant is, is, is happy to sign up uh, to retain a shop on that site and it will be in the section 106. So therefore it cannot be changed from um, a shop, from an A3 into anything else. And whoever buys that site, if the client, if the applicant decides to sell, no matter whose ownership it is in, the section 106 will secure an A3 unit on that site. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions to the applicant? Councillor Morris. Thank you, Chair. Um, can you confirm, uh, you said that it will be, you don't need the storage space because there'll be daily deliveries. Can you confirm that the um, proposals that we heard earlier on this evening about the school streets closure are not going to have any impact on uh, your ability to, or, or the, cost, the um, ability of the shop owner to, to service their yeah, shop. Not, not at all. The, the, so the owner will be servicing the shop when it is best to service that shop. So if the shop, if the roads are closed around there, he's, clearly that's not going to be the best time to service the shop. So it, it is literally him jumping in a, in a small car and picking up the, uh, the items that he needs for that day. So maybe a few boxes. So the, the trip movements we're talking are, are minor. It's, um, it's one, one trip a day and he can do that at the lunch times or at a, at a quiet period during the day. And clearly during the rush, the, that morning session, he wants to be there because that's when you get the highest footfall. And then, so it'll, he will actually leave when there is short, when there is lower footfall. Thank you, Chair. Any other questions, Councillor Chopra? Thank you, Chair. Um, just for the clarification for the members, I know the shop owner will be visiting uh, local cash and carry regularly, but is he going to sign any like agreement with any delivery company so they can get goods delivered at their doorstep as well? So then in case he's have less storage, do you have that provision as well or no? I believe that there's something in the, um, in the latest condition that's requesting that to be signed up. So. Um, if there are any regular deliveries, then that, that will be included in the condition, I think. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I've got a little bit of a tech problem. My computer is flashing at me that it's going to restart in 13 minutes, if I, <laughs> unless I uh, do it myself. So as we've actually come to an hour, what we will do is have five minutes break for screen break. Um, I'll restart my computer so that I don't get cut off in 12 minutes, 45 seconds. 
<laughs> and we'll come back at uh, 25 to 8 for the 